Hey, sexy people. Guess what arrived today? Go on, bet you can't guess. Anyway, um, Imperium arrived. Uh, I was out at the time, um, so the postman helpfully just left it in the foyer to the flats in full view of everyone. Um, thankfully, uh, it was still there when I got home, but um, it's rather annoying that the postie does that because um, it's not secure. Anyway, we've got 71, 72, 73 and 74. Just these plain issues this month. I'm going to do 71 and 72 together because they are the Lish Guard. Oh, and I'll tell you about these in a sec. Boink. Let's get rid of that and we shall come onto the plastic in a short while. Let's put that on there. Let's put that on there. And the first thing we're going to talk about are these flying bases. So The, let me just change my lighting. First of all, let's talk about these things. The flying stems that we should have got with our Vanguard Space Marines. So they were missing when we got the Vanguard Space Marines. Uh, and so GW and Hachette have included them with issue 71. Um, so for those of you that have been waiting for these, They've arrived. Okay, let's have a look. Issue 71. So we get part one of two in this one. And we're straight in with the black section, Elites 01. This is our Lish Guard, Guardians of the Nobility. I'm actually thinking, I'm hoping that the other half is going to be able to get hold of a second copy for me um, so that I can build the Lish Guard and the, um, what, uh, these guys here, which looks like the ones we're going for in the magazine where they've just got the war scythe. Um, but I want to also build the ones with the shield because they just look cool. I like it. I'm liking these shields. So hopefully that will... You know that will happen. Um, so you got your battle record, and then we're on to our red section, Imperium 15, Age of the Dark Imperium, and then we've got the heroes. We're looking at Helbrecht, High Marshal of the Black Templars, and Merrick Grimaldis, Hero of Hell's Reach. Um, he's a, yeah, he's a chaplain. Yeah, high chaplain. We then have a short story, number 19, for our red section. The Emperor's Justice. This looks like Black Templars and Orcs. Um, and it's a four-pager. One, two, three, four. Oh, we've then got some more Rogue Trader info here section e incident at arabeth 4 okay cool okay so we got some information on the drukari here drukari raiders which is homunculi splinter weapons we got some info on orc freebooters traitors and renegades eldari corsairs Captain Sloan. Right. Orican the Divinia or Diviner. The single eye of Orican the Diviner reveals him the secrets of time, space, and even fate itself. His astromatic powers allow him to read the schemes of fate and direct events towards whichever path will benefit him most. 
and Anne Rakar, the Traveller. Right, then we're building our Lich Guard. Now, the good thing about these Lich Guard is that the legs are all one piece, so that's a bonus. And then obviously we've got, we're building up the bodies, the back carapace with the spine, and then the front of the torso. Ah, so in this one it's giving you the variant assembly instructions. That's nice of them. So it's showing you how to put them together. for the Lich Guard, which is nice. So I may do this. I may use the shields, because I think they look cool. No other reason. Right, C, Veteran 12. This is one of our missions. Uh, war in the dark, pressing deeper into the Necrons, a subterranean lair. Imperial forces continue to locate dormant stasis chambers filled with deactivated Necron warriors. Sabotaging these chambers will strike a blow against the Necrons. The Overlord's active phalanxes and canoptic constructs have been ordered to protect these facilities in the hope that the Cryptex may restore them to function and raise a new source of troops for the Zarakhan dynasty. So Necrons, glorious restoration. The humans continue to press deeper into Necron territory despite their seemingly unsustainable losses. The Overlord's primary concern is their presence within the tomb networks. Ignorant, superstitious humans cannot be permitted to disrupt attempts to restore the tomb complex to life. An attempt to understand the inner workings of Xenos technology is folly at best and heresy at worst. Imperial High Command has instructed its forces within the Necron structure to destroy all Archaeotech that may impede the war effort. Imperial forces move to seize and scour as much of the Necron tomb as possible. So that's for the Imperial's targeted destruction. Uh, and we are mission briefing. Imperial forces must secure the stasis chamber and set explosive charges. The Necrons must prevent the humans from destroying valuable infrastructure. 50 power forces. Um, so we've got take and hold, progressive um, objective and uh, stasis banks and stasis banks. So we've got stasis banks, progressive, stasis banks, action for secondary objectives. And we are using mats that came with issues 38 and 58. Um, so it looks like you are deploying your forces along the short board edge and there's three objective markers. Okay, right, so let's pop that to the side. Let's have a look at this one. Right, Zandrak. So, red section, D Heroes, O4, Zandrak. Uh, Necrons who hold the rank of a Nemesaur bear great military responsibility. Though Revivication left him quite insane. Nemesaur Zandrek still strives to fulfill his duties assisted by his loyal bodyguard of Vargon or Oberon. And Illuminor Hazares. Is this the one that we're going to get in the extra 10 issues? Illuminor Hazares is a merciless monster a bio architect and hyper technological sorry hyper -technolo technological vivisector who seeks to unpick the secrets of life itself he puts his knowledge to use on and off the battlefield preying upon living specimens and again you know i know i keep saying this but are these things you know are these things really that planned out ahead that with GW recently having che um, teased uh, Asriel's new miniature, um, we're now getting the magazine with Asriel's info sheet on it. And Lazarus. 
Master of the Fifth Company. So he's the um, Primaris Lieutenant. Oh, Captain now. Okay. Um, he's the one that we've been able to get anyway um, as a miniature. And then we've got flyers. I really hate the Storm Raven gunship. I Storm Raven gunship. I hate the Storm Talon. I think they they could have been so much better as miniatures. Yeah, no, they look they look like kids' um, toys, robotics toys. Um, the Stormhawk Interceptor. No, I don't mind the Storm Wolf. I think that looks cool. I like the Ravenwing Dark Talon. Land Speeders, I love. Love them. Tornado, Typhoon, and Bog Standard Land Speeder. And then obviously we've got the Storm Speeder, Hail, Hail Strike, uh, Thunder Strike, and Hammer Strike with different uh, weapons fits. So they don't look too bad. I'm, I'm, it's, it's disappointing they haven't included the. Um, flyer for the Death Watch because that that's a nice vehicle, and I think that the way that that vehicle is done, that flyer is done, it would be ideal for Grey Knights. Uh, like anybody else, think that I'd love to see that in Grey Knight colours. Anyway, Sea Stories fifteen. The Festering Hordes. So is this a continuation of the story from the previous issue? Don't know. Uh, this one looks like it's um, Grey Knights. Talking Grey Knights. Now we're going to come into painting our Leash Guard. So it's fairly standard, same as the rest of our... Um, Murder bots, basically. And then we've got Adeptus Sororitas Rules, Warlord Traits, Inspiring Orator, Righteous Rage, Beacon of Faith, Indomitable Belief, um, Tutorial and Examples. Data Sheet for the Lich Guard. Other War Gear, Dispersion Shield. So you've got Hyperface Sword or War Scythe. Okay, so they're a five inch move. 3 up weapon skill, 3 up ballistic skill, strength 5, toughness 5, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 10 and 3 up save. Tutorial and... Veteran mission 13. Locating the gate. The battle for Ramses can only be won if the flow of Necron reinforcements into the system is halted. Adeptus Mechanicus Xenologists have analysed the energy signatures emanating from the Necron tomb complex and matched them to known phenomena in other areas of the Pariah Nexus. They believe that somewhere beneath the planet's mountains, a functioning dolmen gate is being used to summon Necrons into the fight. The gate must be located and put out of commission. So Necrons, secure the conduits. The Necrons know well the importance of the Dolmen Gate and have dispatched forces to protect their main source of reinforcements. Phalanxes have been posted to every power nexus, conduit, bank and access corridor and are well prepared for the coming attack. The Overlord remains confident of victory. Several Imperial Scout units have advanced... Uh, sorry, start again. Several Imperial Scout units and advanced assault parties have delved deep into the Necron's lair, sowing destruction and confusion. Their new orders are to seize, scan and map all power conduits and generators, building a picture of the Necron tomb and ultimately locating the Dolmen Gate. So we're using all four of our battle mats again. Um, all the Pale Grey sides. It's a veteran mission, mission briefing, in order to... Uh, complete the all specs arrays scan imperial units must interface with each other and gather data the necrons meanwhile seek to overload the array before its scan is complete armies up to 75 power uh, mission rules multi-pronged assault both players must place half of their units in each of their deployment zones so you're deploying in opposite corners so um, player A in by opposite each other diagonally and player B opposite each other diagonally. Looks like there's five 
objective markers placed in a uh, diamond formation around a single point. Mission rules. Both players must place half the units. Blah, blah, blah. Right, primary objectives, you've got take and hold progressive and secondary objectives are all spec scan progressive and all spec scan action. So there you go. And the next two issues, 73, 74, we got the heavy locust destroyer uh, and the fire survey turret. So let me bring you down and we can take a quick squiz at the plastic. So it looks like we've got 32 mil bases. Um, okay, so Games Workshop 2011 sculpt. Um, but do you know what? They don't look too bad. I'm liking the detail on these. Look, the detail on these shields, if I can get one under the camera, I love, I'm loving this, you know. These will look really nice, I think, um, with the um, glow pattern that I try and uh, replicate on the carapace for the, um, the Tomb Spider and the Wraiths. So that would be cool. But yeah, just looking at these bad boys, um, there's plenty of options. So we've got this. So I'm assuming that not all of the uh, weapon options are covered in this particular magazine because we've got one, two, three, three different types. Yeah, three different types. And then we've got what look like smaller shields here. So we've got these shields here, which are quite large, but then these smaller ones. So if I flip it over, you can see that there's obviously space for the forearm to go. And then you've got the hand, you know, much similar to this. You've got the forearm that goes across and then um, the hand. So, yeah, that's that's really interesting. I think we're going to have plenty of spare parts left over from this. But I'm liking them. And you've got two different heads as well. So I don't know if you can see, you've got bog standard heads here with a single eye. Yeah, no, they've, it's a power orb and they've got two eyes. And then you've got these crested heads here. So we've got, there's obviously more than two weapon options, but they're only giving us two in the magazine. Okay, so yeah, so you make five of these. Um, but I'm looking forward to building these. I'm going to build these with the um, sword and shield. Because that looks like the fun thing to do. Right, come back in a sec and we'll build them. Let's build us some Lich Guard, shall we? Um, I'm going to go with the shields and hyperface swords, I think they're called. Because I like these, I think they're cool. Oh, excuse me, sorry. My apologies. Um, so, anyway, um, coming back to our mini. There's a couple of things that you need to be aware of when you put the basic torso and legs together. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it if the camera focuses. Right. On the front of the um kind of like that the the, the, the loincloth I suppose you'd call it metallic loin uh, covering there's if you've got it the right way around there should be like a ball with a nipple on it for want of a better explanation and on the back there's a couple of dimples now that's the back 
the back is the one with the dimples on because what it does is on the hips here at the tops of the legs here those dimples will sit evenly in that bit so you need to make sure you've got it the right way round and then I would um, if you've got some glue that's happy to stay in place um, or if you like use like me using the EMA or even the Tamiya plastic weld then obviously just hold it in place and put a dab of glue behind it and then once you've done that I would recommend sticking it to the base and uh, it will look like that um, now the other thing that you need to be aware of is the spine so I don't know if you can see the spine and there's a little pin on the inside of the curve um, and that pin should be towards the bottom of the spine because there's a hole in the back of the torso and that pin locates into that torso for when you glue it so once it's glued in the spine will project up above the collar the back of the collar there and it will look like that basically So that's how that goes and then we've got um, the um, essentially what would be the collar bones going into the um, front of the torso so they go in and make sure you get those around the right way as well so when you put them in When you put these in, there is a flat tab which is towards the back and that goes in like so, so that it looks like that and then we can join these two bits together. So. Okay, and then that's the torso. So once you've made your five pairs of legs, put your loincloths on, built your five torsos up. Um, it's up to you how you do it. I'm going to pop the torsos on now uh, and just think, just have a look and see how I think these are best going to align. Um, in going on to the top of the torso spine bit. So, for example, that one will just go on like so. And then just work your way through each one until you're happy with a basic position arms on shields now the arms these arms these shields are all the same uh, they're just listed as item 58 but the arms that the instructions are saying to use are numbers 41 44 47 and 50 now what I'm going to recommend is gluing the arms to the shields prior to gluing them onto the uh, shoulder joints 
Um, now, when you do this, there's going to be three points of contact. So obviously at the wrist where it meets the hand, but then you've got the forearm um, just before the elbow joint will have two points of contact here and here. Um, so I would probably dab a glue on the wrist joint to just secure it in place initially and then come in with some glue each side like so and then I would set those aside glue them on um, once these have had chance to go off so I'm going to do the rest now and then we'll come back and sort out the hyperface sword um, but with the hyperface sword I'm actually going to glue that on after I've glued on the arm for it to the shoulder joint so that I get the best position in in relation to the sword arm and the shield so um, popping in the shield arms just obviously put the glue into the socket and then just add your shield arm just make sure you've given them enough time to set and um, because if you don't and the glue is still soft and the joint is still soft when you're trying to push the, the arm joint in it will come out it will pop out of where it's holding the shield so that's that then I'm thinking of just trying to get weapon positions that might be kind of a logical thing. So just have a play and see what um, see what you can come up with. Um, so just sticking the arms in like so. I'm just going to pop his head on. I did make a slight faux pas with building these. I've got the neck join in the wrong way round, but I've trimmed it slightly so the heads should fit now without too many issues. But I do have a second set, so hopefully I will get that right. And then the best way to glue this on and I this is this is going to be a bit of a gripe because these wrist joints are going to be quite flimsy um so these these are going to be a i think a reasonable weak spot on the mini But essentially, your minis build up like so. So happy building. And um, go over to my Twitter account. The link's in the, um, or the username's in the uh, description. And post up your built minis. Let's, let's see them. Let's see what you did and how you did it. Right, hopefully you join me in the next video. All right, take care. Bye-bye.